Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make a very short, hopefully short and quick video on the lecture that has been going on in class for the past uh, week and a half or so, titled Babylon, Assyria, and Other Bad Neighbors. So we want to step back and look at the history of Mesopotam Mesopotamia. We're going to go from the, from the beginning uh, up until the Persian Empire, but just to kind of get an idea. We looked at Israel with some in depth at, at some point, and we want to see what's happening to the to the nations around Israel, uh, kind of from the start of civilization until the Persians come along. All right, so you may use the notes. This is also to help those that didn't have a chance or, or didn't take the chance to write down good notes associated with this lecture. So you've got a handout that has some maps. There's some maps likewise that you had to create or you need to create. You can write notes in the margins or on a separate piece of paper. You'll have an opportunity on this lecture material uh, here in a couple days and you can use the notes that you have taken from this presentation or from class to to be successful on that opportunity you can't use the PowerPoint itself I'm gonna go fast you can stop it at any point either to make a map that you didn't or to finish a map that you didn't finish or to take notes especially on the slides that have text okay so let's press on here is a map of Mesopotamia at the dawn of civilization. We're talking about 3000 to 2000 BC. Notice there's really, I mean, there are a number of people. You see the, you see the Amorites up here. You see the uh, Elamites over here, but there's really three people that are groups that we need to talk about. And the first one is Sumer. Sumer is a collection of city states down here. They are related by language and culture or religion. Uh, but they are ruled individually by, by separate kings, okay? So they're not a single nation. Uh, going up the food chain a little bit, we have the old uh, kingdom of Egypt over here. It has ar arisen independently of Mesopotamia and at this point in time has very little contact with them. And, um, uh, and, and it's a kingdom, so it is ruled by, by a single person. And then we have... Akkad or the Akkadian Empire. This is the first empire in the history of the world that we know of and uh, an uh, empire is a group of states states under a single supreme authority. So as down here in Sumer each individual city is a state in and of itself. Again they are related to one another but each is ruled by a king. You end up with a single king or emperor over all the different uh, cities here in the Akkadian Empire. That requires a strong ruler and in this case it was a guy named Sargon. So he comes up with the idea that hey if there is just one ruler that we can act as uh, as a single organism rather than you know a single large organism rather than as a bunch of individual smaller entities and that there is some value in that. At this point in history the Jews as a people do not exist at all. Okay, we flash forward, so that the previous slide ended about 2000 BC, for, so we pick up there. This is the time of the patriarchs, from 2000 BC to about 1550 BC. So a couple things I, I want you to notice. Um, one is that the Akkadian Empire no longer exists. Um, it, poor leadership, uh, you know, people not as strong as Sargon came up, not allowed two competing groups to come to the forefront. And this is old Assyria and the old Babylonian kingdom. Okay, so old Assyria starts establishing itself, a strong identity and a strong military, but it is in constant contact with the old Babylonian kingdom down here. Okay, it's also characterized by strong leaders. Uh, leaders like Hammurabi, we've studied some of the law of Hammurabi, but upon his death, things begin to unravel for the old Babylonian kingdom. Um, so he, he dies of approximately 1750 BC, and so the old Babylonian kingdom will go into demise there. You see the city of Ur down here, where Abraham is from. He will travel up here to Haran uh, with, his, uh, with his father and spend some time there. And then at God's command, he will move down here to Canaan. So this is, again, the time of the patriarchs, and so not just Abraham, but Isaac, his son, and Jacob, his grandson, and, and all their growing families, the 12 tribes, the, the you know, seminal 12 tribes of Israel are during this time and they're living here in Canaan, of course. 
They sell Joseph to the Egyptians, and then they will go and sojourn in Egypt. This is the middle kingdom of Egypt, and well, during this time, it's the middle kingdom, and also one of the times of kind of unrest is called one of the, uh, the intermediate periods. And one of the reasons there's the intermediate period is the invasion of Egypt by the people called the Hyksos. Nobody really knows a whole lot about them, but they came in and they, they controlled Egypt for, for a while. Okay, so there's a lot of things going on during, during this time. So Egypt has been invaded, then the Middle Kingdom is established, and the, the, the Hebrews, the descendants of Abraham, they all come to live here. Uh, around Goshen, right? So there's the time of of the patriarchs. Okay, by this time, likewise, trade is beginning to to happen regularly between Egypt and Mesopotamia, and it doesn't go this way across the desert. It has to follow the coast of Canaan because it's just too dangerous to go across this way. And so the control of trade routes through this narrow strip of land along the coast becomes important. So trade from Egypt would go follow the coast up and then come down the river valleys, and likewise it would go the other way as well. All right, that brings us here. I borrowed this map from Mrs. Gutierrez. She gave it to you guys as for to help you with your reading of the Hittite warrior to give you some sense of what's going on here. So let's let's take a look at this. By this time, old Assyrian, old Babylon are spent from years of competition and likewise suffering from weak leadership. And this allows two other groups of people to come to the forefront. And this would be the Hittite Empire here. And Egypt has a resurgence under the New Kingdom. And there's a few other groups that, that come uh, into play as well. So uh, the Mitanni over here, uh, the Elamites are, are still over here. And I think, yeah, there's Elam. Okay, and the other one I want to point out is Mycenaean Greece. So this is the early Greeks over here, 14th century BC. So we're talking about, you know, the, the 1500 BC. Okay, all right, so during that century. So uh, the Jews by this time have come out. They, the Exodus has happened. They have come out of Egypt. They have gone into the promised land. They have divided it among the 12 tribes. And so they are living there as, as um, agriculturalists, as farmers, and as, as herders and shepherders. This is the time of the judges. Okay, So they don't really control this land. They live on it with a lot of autonomy. But the people that claim ownership of this would be the new kingdom of Egypt. And of course, there is conflict now between the Hittites and the Egyptians. Okay, so let's move on. Here's the first uh, slide of text. Again, you can stop at any time, pause and start. So I've talked about some of this, Old Babylon, Old Assyria in decline. Uh, I've talked about in this power vacuum, the Hittites and the new, Egypt's new kingdom coming into being. And the conflict between those two culminates in the Battle of Kadesh, 1274 BC. This is the largest chariot battle ever. And after a short, well, I think it's about 40 or 50 years afterwards, that they got tired of conflict and they made a peace treaty. Uh, they both claim to have won the Battle of Kadesh. Modern scholars and historians don't think either actually did, but they, they nonetheless, they did their chest beating. It was the largest chariot battle ever in history that we know of. And it proved that the lighter two-wheeled, two-crew member chariots of the Egyptians were, was superior, were superior to the heavier three-crew member four-wheeled chariots of the Hittites. They were faster and more maneuverable. But nonetheless, neither of them could claim clear victory, uh, although they both did. All right, uh, Mycenaean Greece, as I said, has expanded. Uh, they're establishing colonies in Asia. That's the west coast of the Anatolian Peninsula. What does modern day Turkey? And during this time, they will go to war with Troy. That's approximately 1200 BC. Uh, again, the Jews have taken most of the promised land, divided it between the 12 tribes, and they're living a very tribal fragmented time during the time of the judges. Okay, here's the first map that you no, th this map I did give to you, it was in the handout, okay? And so notice the fragmentation. So again, uh, just the kind of constant strife between Egypt and the Hittites uh, just sort of use up their resources and their energy, and that allows other groups to, to come back into place. So there's going to be a resurgence of, of Babylon, a resurgence of Assyria. You see all kinds of other people, the Medes over here, uh, Colchis, the Phrygians. So you, you see a lot of this Phoenicia uh, is going to become independent for the first time. 
in probably their life. And they're just city states. They are not landholders. They buy and sell food and goods because they're they're rich merchants. They are the movers and shakers of the ancient world. If you need something delivered from point A to point B, you call the Phoenicians. And then here is Israel under the United Kingdom. All right, so the bad boys, uh, Babylon, the Syria, the Hittites, Egypt, they're all spent by this time, reaping your rewards, bad leadership pressures from other tribes of people, overly ambitious military ventures. A scene in Greece is experienced in dark age after the glories of the Trojan War victory. So here we are again in about 1000 BC. And the Phoenicians were at the height of their power, establishing colonies all over the mid. So you can pause these text slides at any, any point. I'm going to go through them really quickly. Uh, number four, another, another point, many other smaller peoples were establishing kingdoms without the continuing threats of the bad boys. Talked about that a little bit. Much of Mesopotamia was a patchwork of of tens of little Aramean kingdoms. Okay, so that was the green area on that map where it said Aramean kingdoms. Israel is at its height as the United Kingdom. It's wealthy from trading with neighbors, including far-flung places like Saba, which is where the king, the queen of Sheba came from. Okay, here's the first map that you were asked to draw, and this is the, the Syrian Empire. Uh, here is the direct rule of it in yellow and vassal states. These are other nations it has conquered which owe its allegiance there. The Greek Mycenaean Greece is gone and the Greek city-states are starting. We are here in about 700 BC. The kingdom of Colchis, Colchis is established and there's a Phrygian kingdom. There's a little Lydian kingdom. Okay, but the big boys on the block are, are the Assyrians here. And notice they have taken Babylon and Egypt and, uh, and Judah itself is, is a uh, is a vassal state. Okay, let's look at this. So the new bad boy, the Neo-Assyrian Empire, is at its height here in 700 BC. Their expansion started under brutal conquerors, and you see their names here. These are all guys that are mentioned in the Bible because there is conflict, of course, between um, between both the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel and Judah and with Assyria. They had an unequaled military machine. They were able to field armies of over 100,000 well-trained, disciplined troops. Okay, so they had a, a professional army rather than just a sort of farmers and, and blacksmiths and whoever that were gathered to go to war. They had a professional military. That's all they did. And they were able to field huge armies that were well-trained, very disciplined, first large armies to use iron weapons. The Hittites are first ones to start to field iron weapons, but to use them in, to a large extent, the Assyrians are the first. Okay, here's the Lamassu again. These are uh, statues that guarded all the city gates in, in Babylon. Um, there, we've talked about that their art, they did a lot of relief work or carvings like this or works in i guess maybe pottery terracotta whatever it is and a lot of it is militaristic okay and you see they part of their military machine were siege weapons and here you see it on wheels large things that could breach the walls of fortified cities there's guys falling off here's some guys that are impaled some of the enemy they're impaled they were brutal here's another okay there's another siege engine you see the bricks falling off okay there's a lion hunt, and there's a lion with somebody in its jaws. Here is uh, King Ash Asherabital. I can't remember his name, but anyway, there he is. He he doesn't use a chariot. He's he's too manly for that. He just uh, uses his sword on the lions. Okay, uh, so 700 BC, largest empire the world has yet seen. Some conquered kingdoms were ruled as vassal states. These are countries subordinate to one another owing homage and allegiance to them. Israel, the northern kingdom, was finally destroyed in 722 by Sargon II for refusing to pay tribute to the Assyrians, and many Jews were dispersed, were dispersed through Assyria. These are the ten lost tribes, uh, so they were scattered to the four winds. Brutality, however, makes enemies. There's a moral philosophy conclusion for you. Babylon and the Medes allied together. They conquered the capital of Assyria, Nineveh, in 612, and Assyria ends just a few years later. Okay, there's an artist rendition of Nineveh. Here was a gate, that uh, a rebuilt gate, the, so modern country of Iraq where Nineveh is found. They rebuilt the city gate and the Islamic radicals of ISIS destroyed that uh, several years ago. Okay, here's the next slide that you, or next map that you needed to draw. And uh, so here we are about 600 BC. It would be the height of the Babylonian Empire. You see the Median Empire, they come, they come into fruition as well but this is the big boy on the block at the time okay so get that in mind I'll be referring to some of these 
people as we go along. Okay, so the new bad boy, that'd be the Neo Babylonian Empire, was at its height, 600 BC. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he's gonna, he's the the most prominent of the Babylonian kings during his time. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the Egyptian army, the remnants of Assyria at the Battle of Carchemish, 605 BC, and this is the beginning of Babylonian dominance. Uh, their alliance against Assyria, when it was over, the Medes form a rival empire called the Median Empire. So remember, they were allies to destroy Assyria, and then they became competitors. Competition with Median meant Babylon's empire would be short-lived, less than 100 years. So Neo-Babylonian Empire lasts for less than 100 years, but during that 100 years, it was a time of great, great prosperity. And Nebuchadnezzar made Babylon one of the, one of the ancient cities great great cities. Okay, so, you know, you might think today of New York City or Tokyo or Paris as a, as a great city. Babylon was was that place back in this time. He built grand walls, palaces, the Hanging Gardens, which was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. He finally destroyed Judah, the southern kingdom. Remember, Assyria destroyed the northern kingdom of, of Israel. Okay, uh, Nebuchadnezzar is going to destroy the southern kingdom of Judah and likewise Jerusalem itself. And the temple that's there in, in 587 BC, and that's because Judah had revolted, and also because they had been a vassal state of, of, of Syria. They had been an ally of Assyria you know, back in the time in the day. He carried the best and the brightest off to Babylon. So the, you know the, the, the of uh, Daniel during that time. So the best and brightest of the Hebrews of the Jewish people he carried off to Babylon. All right. Other people started to flourish in the absence of Assyria, so Lydia becomes a small but thriving empire of its own. That's there in modern-day Turkey. The Greeks were out of their dark ages, and many competing city-states city started sending colonies all over the Mediterranean and the Black Seas. Uh, and then King Nabonidus, uh, he was the kind of the last of the kings for old for uh, Neo Babylon. He neglected the worship of their main god Marduk, and this infuriated and estranged a lot of the people and so they put up very little resistance to the Persian invasion in 539 BC. Okay, there's uh, reconstructed gates uh, called the Ishtar gates, one of the gates that entered into Babylon and that's in the Pergamum Museum which is in I believe either Berlin or Munich, Germany. Okay, notice that the art of the uh, of the Babylonians was, was nicer than that of see they even had flowers there that was nicer than than how the Assyrians decorated things here's the a relief of the of Marduk the god Marduk and here's uh, uh, Nabonidus with his back turned to him worshiping other other gods the the moon god and and the sun god and Venus okay uh, there's the artist rendition the hanging gardens of Babylon uh, there's another one who beautiful Okay, there's another one. All right, let's press on. Okay, so there, just to kind of close up, notice the people, the Scythians. Okay, so there's other people around the story. Lydian Empire, they're becoming big. Colchis is still there, my, one of my favorite little places. All right, well, let's flash forward 100 years to 500 BC. And notice, uh, there's only two colors there. There's green and there's red. This is the Greek city-states. They have, they'll co be collected together in the Hellenic lead. And they are collecting together because of the threat of the Persian Empire. So they they will work together. They'll fight each other normally under normal circumstances. But uh, when Persia starts being a, a menace, they're going to coalesce against Persia. So Persia, here it is. And those are all kinds of other people groups. There, notice Colquis is not a kingdom anymore. Uh, so look at all the different people groups. You need to create this map if you haven't already. And let's talk about it really briefly. So with the fall of Nineveh. 612, the Median Empire, or the Median King Cyraxes forms the Median Empire. 559 BC, Cyrus the Great united Media's neighbor, the Persians, and began forging his own empire. Media becomes fir Persia's first satrapy or province in 550 BC, and is followed by Lydia and others. His conquests were restrained, not brutal. His rule was compassionate, not oppressive, okay, in, in direct opposition to or contrast to Assyria. Uh, Babylon to a, to a lesser degree as well. Cyrus restored other people's temples, was religiously tolerant. He decreed that the Jews could return to the promised land and rebuild their temple in Jerusalem, 538 BC. Cyrus died fighting the Mesagatai, 530 BC. As some Cambyses subdued Egypt, and the next king Darius ruled the largest empire the world had yet seen, 
and then he turned his face westward towards Greece. And I believe we end there. We'll talk about uh, Persia and Greece um, separately. Okay, so I am going to end the video right there.